So I have this friend. Um, he recommended a book by Walt Brown on hydroplates. Um, your specialty is hydrology. What What are your thoughts on Brown's ideas? Yeah, so, so Walt Brown has he has a manifesto, if you will, that has gone through at least eight editions. So the the, the last the one that's on my shelf is actually the, the eighth edition. Uh, and all of those, he has made this argument for the Noah's flood that the earth was created with a solid, unbroken crust. And the importance of that is that, that if you're aware of plate tectonics today, the earth's crust is actually made up of a series of, of pieces that are all slowly moving around. And so at the, you know, where one uh, crust butts up against the other, uh, you have collisions or pulling apart or sliding past. But Brown's uh, idea is that the earth in its initial creation was just a solid crust, no, no, uh, no individual plates. And all sitting on this massive body of subterranean water. At the moment of the flood, God cracks the crust, open up pathways where now the tremendous pressure of the crust sitting on this water causes that water to gush up, uh, even up into the atmosphere, supplying the water for the flood, but also beginning to push the, the sides of the crust apart uh, as fast as like 40 miles per hour pushing up mountains, creating uh, ocean trenches, and the, these tsunamis of water that, that would then ensue would have passed over the top of continents. And so we would just end up with this vast mixture of marine and terrestrial creatures all in the same layers and, and eventually fossilized and preserved. So, so that's what the, the, the theory is. My assessment of that, which is not unique to me, it's it's common to, to, to many of us, is not just scientific. It, it's, it starts with a theological problem. Uh, and that is that that idea requires that God created the, the earth and called it good as a ticking time bomb. So God made a time bomb and called it good that was just waiting for a little crack in order to create this, you know, for, for no other purpose other than to just wipe everything out. Uh, now, that's not saying that I don't think that that Noah's flood is telling a true story. I think that that the Bible is recording a, a true and, a, and real event that is described um, by Noah, uh, that I don't think the Bible is referring to a global event the text itself does not actually support a global event. Uh, but I, I do have that theological issue with, with Brown's idea. So on the scientific side, uh, the rapidly moving plates is going to generate a lot of friction. And we see that even today with slow moving plates that, that it actually generates volcanism. So if we have fast moving plates, we should expect to see uh, massive amounts of melting of the crust and where plates are colliding, especially near the surface when the rock's brittle, we should see pervasive evidence of shattered rock at mountains. And as these tsunamis pass over the continents, we should find these, these massive beds of jumbled and mixed fossils of marine and terrestrial organisms. And the fact is, when we go and look at nature, we don't see any of that. So it doesn't really have scientific support. All right, thanks. So how about St. Helen, Mount, Mount St. Helens? I've heard, you know, there's rapid change in the area resulting from its eruption. Uh, I've, I've flown over it. It looks kind of cool. Um, is this good evidence that other formations like the Grand Canyon could also form rapidly? Yeah, so, so that gets at a a particular piece of misinformation that is that is continuously reported by the young earth community that uniformitarian 
geologists or conventional scientists believe that the, the, the processes, the, the rates uh, and magnitudes of things that we see today are the same as, as have always been in the past, which is simply not true. Uh, scientists have long recognized that there is evidence that at some times in the past, things like volcanism, for example, or meteorite impact have resulted in much larger, much faster events than what we may be seeing at the, at the moment. Also, there is a recognition among geologists that the rate at which something happens, like layers accumulating and canyons forming, depends greatly on the process that's creating it. So if you're looking at something like limestone accumulation in an ocean, then that is something that takes a very long time to, to happen. Uh, if you're looking at ash beds forming from volcanic eruptions, I mean, that's something that happens in a, a virtual blink of an eye. So you can get massive beds formed very quickly. And when you go and look at the, the, the historical record in the rocks, you can tell the difference between limestone and volcanic ash. So likewise, when you're looking at canyon formation, uh, if we're looking at this cutting of a canyon by uh, a process through limestone forming vast uh, and, and very large cliffs, that's a process that's not going to be very fast. Whereas if you have unconsolidated volcanic ash and you have heavy rains, then geologists fully expect that that's a process that can happen very quickly.